A professional fighter who worked with me on one of my other videos watched an earlier Crew Jack video and said to me, but these techniques can't work in a real fight. It's not fast enough. It's too many techniques. The point of the story is Crew Jack Otman has a perfect formula. He can take normal, everyday people who have jobs, who go to school, who have normal lives, and he can teach them Muay Thai in such a way that they have fun, they get in shape, they really enjoy themselves, and they don't get hurt. And then, as they move up to phase two, phase three of training, they can attend classes like this and they learn the classical ancient movements. And it's absolutely beautiful. And you don't learn these ancient movements in modern sport Muay Thai because people feel they're not applicable today. Now, what I believe is that by learning these sequences, probably you're never going to do a full sequence of three, five, seven movements on someone when they throw a punch at you. But learning concepts such as if I put my elbow in the way of a punch, I can break the guy's hand, or such as if I push on his elbow, I can push him to the ground, then it works. So the idea is you practice the sequence over and over and over, and then when you fight, it's not that you're going to actually do the sequence, but that you're going to see opportunities and capitalize on opportunities that you would otherwise have missed because your normal set of tools didn't work in those situations. Or let's say with your expanded set of tools, you can find openings that you would have missed before. I like coming to Crew Jacks because I get to do all this stuff that I never get to do anywhere else. You get excellent instruction like doing these drills, talking us through the various combinations. You don't get that in regular Muay Thai gyms, so it's a lot of fun. Plus tonight we're doing all those skills that I need for the movie. Technique is the same, the name's different depending on where you pray. Sometimes no class. Yep. That's the call set Tomoy. All this call Tomoy. Tomoy is to Moi. Moi is the supposedly typical name. Moi, Khmer, Moi, Moi, Thai. So, what's to do? What's to do Moi. Yep. So, there's a local life still. One thing I like about training with Crew Jack, he recognizes the similarity in the origins of the Muay sports, the kickboxing sports, Brad Al Saray in Cambodia, Muay Lao in Lao, Muay Thai in Thailand, Muay Chaya in southern Thailand, Letwe in Burma, and Tomoy here in Malaysia. Boxing, uh, Muay Thai talk doesn't matter. Come, thank you, Mars. Don't tell me you can't do this out. Look down. Up a bit now. For Jack, that looks like mixed martial arts. Is that a new technique? <laughs> Sorry, I have to laugh. It's more than 5,000 years old. What mixed martial arts? <laughs> what mixed martial arts? 5,000 years old? The thing about the ancient Muay arts is that they included a lot more grappling than modern Muay Thai does. Modern Muay Thai only grapples from the head. Now, part of that is because you're wearing gloves, and part of it is because of the rules. But the old Muay styles, whether it be Boktor or Tomoy, and of course Lethwe in Burma where they still allow this type of grappling. There's a lot of grappling, especially things where you catch the guy's arm and you catch the guy's leg and you take him to the ground and you break the leg or you break the arm. <laughs> It's a long-running joke between Jack and me that, that what they were doing was mixed martial arts, so it looks like something modern, but of course it's something very old. The one thing they don't have, of course, is ground fighting. You don't go to the ground and continue to fight or do a submission. <laughs> Because of the connection with Silat, 
there are finishing movements. Once you throw the man to the ground, you break the arm, you break the leg, you rip out the nostrils, you bite off the ear, you rip out the throat, something horrible. You do something really horrible to the guy so he doesn't get back up. Because remember that this art was practiced without gloves and it was practiced by Silat practitioners and these are people who fought to the death and normally they would have been fighting with knives but here they're fighting with their bare hands. <laughs> Yes. yes. One inch below the nipple. Then the hip. Then you put it in. Can we not put that? I don't like the word nipple. The word nipple disturbs me. The word nipple has no place on my show. Just do it. One inch what is it? Alright, here. What are you hitting? You are hitting the lungs. The lungs. Yeah, make stop really. This is better. Our lungs and the heart. Because there's a shirt down under the lungs. Start here. Okay, now. It's not very fast. I'm Antonio Graceffo. That's it for this episode of Martial Arts Odyssey. As always, at the end of every episode of Martial Arts Odyssey, I tell you, get in the gym, do your sets, do your reps, do your road work, and please say a prayer for the people of Sean State.